Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be creating a replica of the Animal Crossing New Horizons loading screen, loading animation, that one right at the bottom of the, of the screen when you have loading between scenes. So I'm going to shoot through this bit here, I'm going to speed it up really fast because all I'm doing is replicating the graphic. Now the image that I got, the only image I got for some reason was really low res, really crappy, and so I'm using both the image reference but as well my own memory too. Like you can't even tell that the tips of the uh, palm tree leaves are slightly brighter like they are in game. But anyway, I'm just, you know, trying to get it to work. At this first bit of the stream, the microphone wasn't working. So I was really, it was a very, very, very silent chat, which I really do not like. I want people to enjoy being on the chat when they're, when they're watching my stream. So the difficult bit here is going to be replicating those waves at the front of the island which actually are cleverly aligned with the corners of the of the blue foam very 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 cleverly done and uh, when i saw it i had i didn't really knew how they made it but then i was looking at it and going how neatly it matched then it just went i just went like oh, okay i they made it match you know it wasn't like an accident that it, it was clear so what i'm doing here is i'm creating an atlas all of the different parts and elements that compose this loading icon are on one image and here in unity all i do is i take that image and tell unity that it's supposed to be a multiple sprite image right so i just go on to my inspector here on the image i'm showing the animation tools i'm going to use for animation transformations so I go to here and say that it's a multiple graphic and then in the sprite editor, I can actually just um, automatically change. So here I'm moving the pivots of all of these elements to the places where I want those images to rotate. So for example, those triangular waves, I want the pivot to be on the bottom. On the island, I'm okay with it being in the center. And some of them I don't really care because I'm not gonna be doing anything that requires me to define a pivot. So to start off, I create an empty game object and call that loading icon, and everything is going to be a children of that, a child of that uh, game object. And it doesn't really mean that they're going to be a direct child. It may be, might be a child of a child, like the trunk here. And the reason for that is that I want the trunk to animate with the island. Now, if you notice, the palm leaves all sort of stayed in almost the correct place, and that's because the pivot points are already set. And when you do that, what happens is that they tend to stick to the same position as everyone else, except that their pivots sort of shift the image away. Now, this is going to be the difficult bit here, and I almost give up on it because I want to use the mask from the Unity UI, which lets you create an image that acts as a sort of a mask for another image so that the second image is only visible through the shape of the first image. That's pretty much how masks work. Imagine mask as a piece of white paper that you cut a shape in, and then you see the graphics behind it, but then the paper itself becomes invisible, right? So it's fairly complicated. And you can use masks two ways. You can use them as uh, an outside mask and an inside mask, but I wasn't getting it to work. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna fake it. I'm just gonna leave it to the end. I'm gonna crack on with everything else. And then I'm, I'm gonna leave it to the end and probably fake it with some you know black bars across the image. And it's okay because it's a black background. I don't see any reason why the guys who made Animal Crossing wouldn't do it that way, right? There's no limitation. They, they should be able to do it. But of course, it's not, you know, very elegant. You want to do things the right way. So I was looking at reference online uh, to see if the, the positions and scales of everything were right. And here I'm dealing with layers. So layers work in a very simple way. The objects you want to be in front, you just have to give them a higher layer number. So basically, it's like a stage where layer zero is like the back of the stage and as you get a higher number you get it closer to the audience um, and um, it only gets complicated if, if there's a lot of graphics to deal with right if, if there's a couple of image it's not complicated at all but if it's a lot of stuff that has to be in front at the back and I'm just sort of explaining the what I was going to do and actually it was a really good good idea for me to have like a mind map of what layers were uh, for certain um, images. Now you can see like like now the island is in front of the tree trunk and I didn't change anything in the uh, in the left in the hierarchy. I didn't reposition things and on the if you're working on a UI that's how you do it. You bring stuff down to make it uh, become in front of all the other stuff. I'm renaming here some of the graphics because it's easier for the animation for you to be have a reference for the name for what the object really is. And I didn't do this. You could have done this when I was separating the sprites and I didn't do it out of uh, uh, hastiness. I was just like, 
I really want to animate, you know? So now we're animating. So we select the basic empty game object that we created initially, and we give that object the animation, right? And so everything else, we just have to make sure that uh, plays along. So here I just created one keyframe of the island going up. And at the end, I uh, copy the, the first frame to the end. So here you have the bobbing up and down of the island. And this is done, there you go, with five keyframes in, in a way. Of course, it's keyframes in rotation and position. So in the first frame, I just rotated it left. And in the middle, I rotate it right. Now it's bobbing up and down, but also rotating. So when I'm animating this, it's a, a couple of problems. Automatically, Unity will try to smooth your keyframes. So whenever you move an object, it will automatically slowly accelerate and then slowly uh, decelerate to stop. And in the case of this waves, I didn't want that because from my recollection in the game, they don't work like that. So here I'm flattening that curve so that they actually linearly uh, move in the X axis, right? And that actually makes it way closer to what I remember it seeing in the game. So I'm doing the same thing here for the bottom one. I'm making the tall um, scaling up frame at the center. And when I do that, they uh, again, I have to deal with the with the motion of the curves. In that case, I didn't mix. Uh, I didn't mess with the handles myself. I actually went in and made all the keyframes to be uh, uh, flat on both on both ends. And um, now that these work, all I'm doing is I'm making them disappear as, uh, as they are no longer visible. And you can do that by activating and deactivating the sprite renderer. So also, I remember that they don't slowly go up and slowly come down. They actually spring up and stay up as long as possible. And that is much more faithful to what the game looks like. So gradually, what we're doing is we're adding all these elements that are actually um, not very complicated to do, uh, but they would be less complicated if we, um, more complicated if we added more keyframes. So we're, all we're doing is we're, we're creating the moments in time to animate, and then we're fiddling with the curves um, to actually figure it out. So here I'm actually creating the reflections on the bottom. And I, what I did was I moved both at the same time, but I, then I del delayed the frames of one of them. And I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing with the leaves on the palm tree. I'm going to animate them all at the same time, then the tree trunk, but then I'm going to shift their positions uh, to a little later uh, time so that they look to stay behind. And it's almost like lazy, lazy palm trees. So here I've already created the animation and scale for this. So I can't really move things because they will snap back to where they were. So instead, I've moved all the keyframes at the same time. And the same thing with scale. I can actually select the scale keyframes and actually move them up so that instead of having to deal with deleting frames and making them again, I can change their values. So they are now, for example, this one is going to be way smaller just by moving those values down because the scale values are going to shrink. So here I think I'm trying to get rid of the grid. And for some reason, I'm unable to get rid of the grid because I've, I don't know, I guess I've been using Unity for a day now. But, but so here we have the rotation of the island. All the elements are working. Now I want to rotate the tree trunk. And I rotate the tree trunk in par with the island. And once I have the rotation here, you see I just shifted the frames away. And that makes the trunk a little slower. It, the animation itself is the same length, but it makes it look like the trunk is a little late in animating. So there's this, this sort of springiness to it not springiness but more like um uh like it's a rubbery uh, object it's more it's more of that idea right so it's it's almost like you have a um a flexing thing so on the center frame here i just reposition all the leaves and i really don't care what i might what, what i'm doing i just shake them and then i move their frames randomly to the side so that they become more natural of course this animation that you're seeing is really 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 quick and it's actually not as um, right, the real one is is not that way, it's way slower. So here what I'm doing is I'm actually researching live how to do a sprite mask and hopefully that will that will work. So it turns out that there's a sprite renderer, uh, sorry, a sprite mask that actually requires you to um, to select a graphic and then define on the other graphics whether or not they are affected by a mask. And once I get that to work, I do a visible gasp. I go, <gasps> you know, on stream because, you know, 
it's w- really wonderful to discover things. Now, as far as I remember, the waves on the the foam at the front they match the corners of the foam, and I'm not tr- I'm not getting them to match, even though I was confident that that was what was happening. And I'm missing a point here, so I'm trying to add those keyframes to sort of match. But as soon as I fix that, it looks like the animation is slow. And then I go, oh, I know what's happening. What's happening is that the X animation is also not linear. It's still a curve. So once I make that linear, then the animation works flawlessly, or you know, at least as with least flaws as I as I want. So right now it looks exactly like I wanted it to look. And the main trick here was to get the mask to work on those front waves. I think there's actually a fish that occasionally would jump off of the water and I failed to do that. One of the people in the stream actually asked how I, I was doing the, the waves. So I create this little quick explanation. I actually paint over the graphics, just go like one, two, three, four. And you can actually see the numbers scroll through. And as the animation gets to the end, it loops back on itself. So you actually never see the graphics loop. And um, and I think also taking the time here to, oh, saving this for the first time. Actually, that's also very clever. I hardly ever do that. So. I'm here testing as well because the mask I think is just the mask, but because I only have the sprite mask component on it, but I think it can actually add a sprite renderer in it, and it becomes a mask and a sprite at the same time. So it really is is a um, fairly versatile. You notice that on the animation there were a couple of yellow elements. So here is actually in real time the animation, which is pretty close I thought to the original one. So. Uh, in this case, this is the cheat I was going to use. I was going to use like a black card to put in front of it and then potentially just shift some of the waves. So the, the, the yellow keyframes there or the yellow references there were parts of the animation that were now missing that I animated accidentally, which was the sprite renderer for the, the mask sprite. So here it is. Here's the final result. I'm going to let it play for a little bit. I mean, it's pretty small on screen, uh, but I can... Uh, um, I think it, it turned out pretty cool. I think it's very similar to the original one. If the original one is a little faster, that's actually quite easy. Just select all the frames and scale them in. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and hope you learned something from it. So take care and I'll see you guys next time.